Before going farther with our orchestration lessons, we need to talk about the ear training side of orchestration. Ideally, every student would have a first-rate orchestra on call to try out every exercise. Since this is obviously impossible, most people these days turn to virtual orchestras, either directly playing the output of a notation program or edited and refined in a DAW. Virtual players, like real ones, aren't all the same. At their worst, they sound like machines, rigid and mechanical, and with very little relation to how real musicians would sound. This is like your email program reading a poem by Shakespeare. All the written information is there, but the expressive result is null. With work, orchestral simulation can be done much more musically and realistically, to the point where even experienced musicians can have a hard time knowing that what they're hearing isn't the real thing. The key point here is that between the two extremes, what makes the most difference is, first, how much the person making the mock-up knows about the real thing, and second, how much time and effort are invested in the simulation. Having a good sound library or two helps, but above a very basic level, it is not the main factor. Let's listen to a few examples. Here's a short passage from my first piano sonata, played by a notation program, straight out of the box. This is horrible, it sounds like a machine. The only audible nuance is the difference between the loud and the soft dynamics in measure 15 to 16. Now the same passage, edited in the DAW. The editing took me about 25 minutes. Among the things I worked on, first, pedal. Since the original has no pedal indications, the playback also had none. But any good pianist would use pedal in this passage, especially in places like measure 17 to 19, where there's clearly a different plane of tone on top floating above the resonance of the sustained chord. Second, voicing. Since the piano is a polyphonic instrument, the good pianist always shades different lines differently. For example, in measure 16, the lower part in the right hand would be quieter than the top part. Third, rubato. A good musician would feel the need to have the music breathe. These little micro-tempo changes help the music to speak, following the ebb and flow of each phrase. And fourth, phrasing. Apart from rubato, phrasing at the piano depends on a lot of subtle differences of volume between successive notes. For example, the triplets in the first bar shouldn't all be equal. Rather, the first note of each group is part of a rising line and needs to be slightly accented. The point here is that unless you have a precise idea of how a real pianist makes music, you can't even begin to approach a musically convincing result. And my edited version above could sound even better with more time and effort. Now let's look at an orchestral example. Here's the final climax of my fifth symphony, played by a notation program. <laughs> Again, this sounds very mechanical, since none of the instruments are phrased or expressively played. For example, the strings have nowhere near enough vibrato. But even more important for our point of view, the orchestral balance is misleading. In a real-life orchestral performance of a tutti passage like this, the rich resonance of the brass would really be center stage. Here all the families are more or less equal. The notation program doesn't know anything about orchestral balance. But balance is one of the most important things a student needs to learn in orchestration. Without a realistic idea of balance, the student risks writing things that look fine on paper but can't possibly work in real life. With a good orchestra, if the music is well crafted, the balance will naturally work itself out with a little bit of fine tuning by the conductor. Each performer will phrase their own part. The combination of many fine musicians led by a good conductor has a richness and suppleness 
very different from what we just heard. Here's a much better version of the same passage. It's still a simulation, but the brass here is much more realistic. And the parts are not all just flat lines with no nuance. It's important to mention that balance in a studio session recording can be quite different from a live concert. Often, when recording music for a video game or a film, the orchestra is recorded in separate sections with many different mics. For example, just the winds or just the string sustains and so on. This makes possible things that are quite unrealistic in a concert, like for example a low flute solo accompanied by trombones, since here the audio mixer can adjust the balance as desired. This isn't to say that rough computer mockups are completely useless. They can be useful to check the harmony, the tempo, and so on. But without a lot of work, they are not going to be a reliable guide to orchestral balance. So how can the student learn about orchestral balance if the raw computer versions can't really be trusted? The answer, obviously, is a combination of score study and listening to live concerts and good recordings, preferably multiple versions of the same piece. Try to notice what all the versions have in common, what stands out most, and what's in the background, and also how the sound evolves within a phrase. This will eventually give you a realistic sense of what to aim for in your mock-ups. Then it's up to you how far you want to go with refining them. A good mock-up requires a lot of musical knowledge, just like a good performance. The sounds, the reverb and so on can be bought, but not the phrasing and the musicality.